What is going on guys, DBG here, and this video, it's just gonna be more so than anything, just talking about the launch of 2K20. And about what we all know, we all know happened. You go into pack market, you look at rewards, you look at the opals, oh, there's no opals redeemed. Someone told me there was. But someone redeemed the Dave Cowens, George Gervin. They got all the way to the pink diamond board. There's a few people, diamond board, like there's a ton of people. There is a ton of people that have gotten up to these diamond boards. And um, did I do the glitch? No. Would I have done the glitch had I been around? 110%. And anyone, anyone who makes YouTube videos that's on Twitter, that's complaining, saying I would have never done the glitch if um, they had the chance. The only reason they're saying that is because they knew it would be patched by the time they got the game, they knew they would never have a chance. I'm saying this right now because it is the 100% truth any YouTuber, and almost any person, most people would, but I know for a fact, anyone that does YouTube videos, anyone would buy at the opportunity to get gameplays with, say, a guy like Tom Gugliata, with Center Magic Johnson. I wanted to get up because this guy was the first game, I wanted to be the first gameplay of this guy, because it's such an interesting card. Anyone, anyone would have done it. So for all the YouTubers that are pretending to be white knights saying I wouldn't have done it, it's a joke, anyone who does it should have their things reset. No, they shouldn't. It was a glitch in the game, people abused it, so what? So what? And I know you guys might be saying, oh, like it's such a big deal, there's people with Gallic Pink Times already. There is one, or I'm guessing at most, at most, there are eight people in the world with Pink Diamonds. There are millions of people that play my team. At most, there are, see what the most redeemed one of these cards are, six in the diamonds. At most, there's probably seven people in the world with, uh, on the diamonds here. At most, there are probably 15, 20 people in the amethyst board. So for the sake of those couple of people, it was such a big, made such a big deal because Killzomoy is one of the people. And my God, am I jealous of Killzomoy. He's gonna be the first at all the gameplays, but fair, fair play to him. Um, he was on the game at the time, he grinded triple threat, and he got the wins, got the cards, so fair play to him, let him get that type of, uh, let him get the views that way, because he sure as hell deserves to be over 100,000, and with the views from these cards, he's definitely going to go over 100,000 subscribers, so fair play to uh, him for that. But again, even look at the ruby board, there are so few people on the ruby board, like, there's none of these with more than 20 redemptions, none of them with more than 20. 18 Quentin Richardson's the most, or 19 Ray Allen. So how many people realistically were affected by this glitch? How many people? I'm going to say, this is just gonna be an estimate, I'm gonna say that 30 people, most. Actually no, 300 tokens would have gotten you to at least the Amethyst. And as you guys can see, there's like 10 people. I'm guessing 10 people in the entire world managed to benefit from this glitch. And sure, it's a little bit annoying knowing that people have already got the cards you're grinding for. Sure, it's annoying, but again, it's only 10 of the millions and millions of people. And if you're in America, these are nearly, I'm th pretty sure all these are Australians. Maybe one person from America, you may never, like you probably will never come up against any of, anyone using a glitch card or a card from the glitch. Like statistically, you are not going to up come up against someone like that ever. So. This is crazy coming from me. I'm the type of person that people say blows everything out of proportion. But this isn't it. Like, as you guys can see, there's so many people that are redeeming these ruby rewards, or these emerald rewards. And as I will always say, get yourself a Bob Sura, wherever he is. Um, did I just get rid of him? So, okay, so once you buy them, you can no longer see the blank by the looks of it, like in previous years, but um, yeah. Trust me, it's going to be a mild, mild inconvenience, and that's it. You guys probably clicked on this video expecting me to have a big rant about it, how 2K, like, how 2K's incompetence has ruined my team. It hasn't. It hasn't. And if you're, like, for most people, for me anyway, like, a lot of people are saying, oh, I just spend money on the game. I do. I spend money for content. But for me, the most fun thing in my team at the start of the year, and it's when they're releasing cards, my most fun times of the year are when I'm looking through players. Like, already I found a couple of hidden gems. I found Terrence Ferguson, who is a gem. 
Like he is an absolute hidden gem. Good three ball, good release, 95 dunk. He's also got decent-ish speed, good stamina, good on defense, good lateral quickness, and is 6'7". He literally is a hidden gem. The Aaron Fox, not a lot of people be thinking about this card. He's got an 80 shot three, a good release, good ball handling, and he's got 89 speed, as well as the quick first step and stop and go badge. And also, Terrence Ferguson, crazily enough, he's got the uh, quick first step badge, so he's basically got the speed boosting badge, as well as 18 gold badges, 18 gold, and two Hall of Fame. Like, this card is ridiculous. T-Mac, this card is unbelievable. Like, unbelievable, this Ruby. Bob Sir is incredible. And if the off chance, if maybe, I'd say the odds are probably maybe one in five that you ever come up against a diamond or a buff card before people can naturally get those cards. Because if day two last year, day two, guys like Smoothie and Ambish had completed all the collections and were already on the diamond board. Smoothie had 10 diamonds day two last year. You better believe someone, even without the glitch, is going to get all those diamonds. But is that gonna turn you off my team? If it is, then I'm not sure this is the right game mode for you. And if you're watching this and you think my team's over, this definitely isn't the right channel for you. Because if you guys have been watching this channel, you guys know more than anything. What I like to promote is I like to promote using different cards. I like to promote hidden gems, budget beasts, cards that a lot of people may not even look at. And at the start of the year, that's what's most fun in my team for me. And I hope with the fact that I've grown mostly on that, that's the same with a lot of you guys. My team is not going anywhere. It is fine. It is going to be a good year for my team. I can already tell that his evolution card, evolving cards, is going to completely change my team. And it is going to change the whole game over the better. I think it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic addition. Do I like position locks? No. Have I ever been a fan of position locks? No, and a big reason for that is this. Anthony Davis cannot play the power forward. What, to, how much do you think the Los Angeles Lakers put this into the game? Like, well, if you guys are all saying that just seeing gambling is gonna make, or seeing a slot machine is gonna make kids buy packs, I don't know what correlation there is in that, then surely Anthony Davis playing this game and seeing that he can't play power forward himself is gonna make Anthony Davis think that he can't play center. So where's that? Where's all the anti-center propaganda about Anthony Davis? Or anti-power forward propaganda? Like, <laughs> Whatever, that was a terrible, terrible point to make, but it's basically, it's along the same lines of, you see a slot machine, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna buy packs even if you can't gamble. It's along those same lines. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. My team this year is fine. And people overhyping it, saying it's the end of my team, there's not gonna be anything that was gonna end my team. The only thing that could have potentially ended my team was if 2K re reacted to the backlash about gambling, and they made some changes that would really kind of make it more pay to win, but they didn't. They stood by what they were doing and I'm happy for it. I think it's a really good, it's been a really good start to the game and I'm looking forward to playing it. I've really enjoyed playing the game today. A lot of people are saying I don't sound excited for a new game. I just haven't slept in days. So uh, I don't think I'll sound, I, you could tell me I won the lotto and I wouldn't sound excited for anything, but my team's got so many great things. You've got domination, which is even better than ever. Like you're getting more rewarded than ever before. You're getting these Evo cards that as you guys saw from the Terrence Ferguson right here, for I'm guessing until Christmas, Terrence Ferguson is still gonna be a beast. He's still gonna be a beast till about Christmas. And that's when you start to come up against diamonds every time. And let's be real, you didn't come up against diamonds in every single game until around January. Like it wasn't that common a thing until they started coming out really cheap around the time of I don't know, maybe the Kawhi Leonard diamond was the first like really good diamond that was super cheap. So things like this, they're a mild annoyance. And by annoying, the one out of 100, one in 100,000 chance pretty much, say 10 people out of a million to play my team. So you've got a one in 100,000 chance of playing one of these guys in any individual game. And also, it is obviously annoying. I'm disappointed that there is people that are gonna be beating me to all the gameplays, that there are people that got away with it without grinding, but look, there is still a point to it. I don't think 2K are gonna overreact in any way by releasing too many OP cards straight away or by um, refreshing the market because I don't think it makes that much of a difference. This is something that's going to be a mild, mild annoyance for me. It's gonna be a mild annoyance for you. And 
for all the people that are just looking at this and think it's the end, it's not. If you think it's the end, then I don't know what you're looking to ever get out of my team. The only people that think it's the end are the ones that either spend a lot of money or argue that it's pay to win. If you play the game mode like it's meant to be played or like I think it's meant to be played, building teams, trying out new teams, being creative with teams, trying out all these new players, players you would have never really used previously in NBA against players you may have never even heard of, trying out all these players. If you've got that mindset into my team, then this is nothing other than, as I said, a mild annoyance. So anyway, that's the video. As you guys probably expected me to react saying that the whole game is broken, but it's not. It is not broken, it's not close to being broken, and even though I may not sound like it because I'm tired, I am very optimistic about 2K20 so far. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.